because he says in verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And notice in John 14, he talks about asking and receiving. Here in John 15, he talks about asking and receiving. He's constantly reminding them, guys, ask, ask. But there are some prerequisites to receiving. What is it? Abide in me. Stay in me. Abide. Settle down. Make your home. Don't visit. Don't come and go. Abide in me. Walk in me. I'll walk in you. You abide in me. I'll walk in you. I'll talk in you. And, and so he brings all this together and says, and with, now notice he says, and if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask whatever you will, and it will be done. And people say, well, wait a minute, you, you can't just say that. I mean, if I abide in him, and, 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 and I mean, I can ask anything. Yeah. And whenever you abide in him and his words abide in you, you'll ask the right things. Why? Because his word abides in you. You'll know what not to ask for. Amen? Yeah. You say, well, but I don't know what, to, what not to ask for. Maybe it's because you're not abiding in him. Right? Maybe it's because his words are not abiding in you. See, it, 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 it kind of irks me sometimes when I hear Christians say, well, I don't know the will of God. Well, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. Well, you know what? Yeah, there's just nobody's fault but your own. You got a book. Right? When you want to find out something, what do you do? You jump on and ask Google. Isn't that right? I mean, you, you don't just go, well, I, you know, I just don't know that. I don't know what to do. I, no, you grab your phone or whatever it is, and you'll look, and you'll look at it. Sometimes just stupid stuff. Stuff that doesn't even matter, you, you'll Google it, right? Just so you can find out. I wonder what happened. You know, and you'll, you'll Google it. And yet when it comes to the Word of God and your life, you don't want to spend any time studying. You don't want to spend any time in there. Why? Because you think everything should just be dumped on you. That isn't the way this works. Jesus said, come follow me. Amen. He didn't say, I'm going to hunt you down and dump this stuff on you whether you want it or not. He said, well, but I want it. We can tell if you want it. Why? Because what you want, you pursue. You, you'll go after it. Amen? Amen? See, whenever I started, I had to know about healing. I had a sick daughter, and then whenever she passed, because I didn't learn it fast enough, and when she passed, now I had to know why, and I had to know how to fix it so somebody else wouldn't have a grave like I did. And so I went in, and I pursued it. And I mean, I got obsessed, and I went after it. And guess what? I didn't care what anybody thought. And you know what else? During that time, I don't even remember if we owned a TV. Uh, well, we did have a VCR at one point, like I said, so I know we had a TV at that point. But I wasn't watching it. I wasn't sitting down and vegging out on TV and all that, you know, whatever program's coming on. They call it programming for a reason. Why? Because they're programming you with their agendas. And so, but I didn't do that. See, I, I did things that got, that honestly, I caught a lot of flack for. And people thought I went off the deep end because I turned all that stuff off. I focused on the word of God. I'd get up in the morning and at one point I had lost my job because they shut it down and we were in a small town. There, were, there wasn't another job. There wasn't. I looked and there wasn't anything for me at that point. And so I'd get up every morning and I'd put on, I'd, I had a little table and I had my strong concordance and my Bible, and I had a cassette player, and I'd put on a cassette of some teacher, and they were teaching faith or healing or something along those lines, and I would sit down there at my table, and I did not get up, I, even for lunch. My wife would bring lunch to me, and I'd sit there and eat and listen to, to the tapes and make notes, and they'd say a scripture, and I'd pause and go look it up and look up the Greek and all that kind of stuff and put it all together, and I got obsessed with it. And, man, people said all kinds of stuff about me. But I didn't care. Why? Because I wanted the truth. Yeah. And, I, and all this other stuff, it was all distractions. And they'd say, well, hey, we're, you know, let's get together this weekend and do a cookout. Mm -mm. No, I can't. And every morning when I'd get up, I would get up and I would stay there studying. Usually 15, during that time especially, anywhere from 15, 16, 18 hours a day. Didn't get up any more than I absolutely had to. Why? Because I had to find an answer. And I was definitely going to do it. I was focused. And I had no promise that I would find what I was looking for. Other than he said, if you seek, you will find. Amen. That was the only thing I had. And, it, and honestly, a lot of times it didn't look like I was finding much. But I kept pressing in, kept pressing in, kept pressing in, and I just kept on doing it. What was I doing? I was sowing in my time, and I was going to reap. Amen. And I just kept on going after it, and I didn't listen to anybody else, and we didn't do any extraneous stuff and all kinds of stuff. There would have been nothing wrong with it. 
It just would have taken up time that I wanted to use somewhere else. Because we're all given the same amount of time every day. But what we use it and how we use it is based on what we want most. And if you want to just sit down and get you know, your brain cells sucked out of your brain by watching stupid programs, then guess what? That's easy to do. But if you want to grow in the Lord and you want to know what he said, you want to abide in him and his words abide in you, then guess what? You're going to spend time in his word. Right, because one of the ways of abiding in him is for his words to abide in you. That's why I don't, I, now listen, I try not to be rude. I don't always succeed at it, but I try not to be rude. But I don't want to sit around and talk junk. You know, now there's, there's times, I mean, you can, you know, there's, there's life and there's some, you can have fun in that sense, but fun shouldn't be your primary occupation. Right. Amen? He did not say, and God made man in his own image, and he said, let them have fun. Right? I mean, the only way you find that is in first opinions, right? And so you have to realize what's important to you. And let me tell you, what's important to you may not be important to other people. And if it ain't important to them, then guess what? They're going to try to keep you from doing it because they're going to do what's important to them, which is have fun. But it's so funny because all of these people, all of these people, the preachers that used to get annoyed at me because I had all these questions, and they were glad when I left their church. And so all these preachers that used to talk about me and say all this stuff, and I thought it was really ironic because whenever I did find truth and when it started working, I'll never forget it because shortly after that and after people started hearing that we were getting results, some of those very same preachers started calling me when their children were sick and asking me to pray. You know, and, and one of them even said, when we got done, he said, now, um, he said, I, I assume this is com confidential that you're not going to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to let you do it. I recorded this whole conversation. I'm going to put it on the radio. <laughs> I said, but I, I, that's what I wanted to say. But I didn't. Why? Because it was about their child. But see, and it's funny, I'm, I'm like, so you, you want me to pray for your child, but you don't want anybody to know. And so that means when your child's healed, you're going to say, oh, look, look what the Lord has done, as though it was some spontaneous thing, which is just going to keep on the, 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 the lies that they were spreading already about healing. And so, but it was, it was kind of funny because at first they'll hate you, but then they'll call you. Why? Because you put in the time, you put in the effort. You went there. He said, if you abide in me, if you abide in me. He didn't say, now, if I call you to abide in me and you do it, no, you make the choice to abide in him. Amen? Amen. And so I, I had to make that decision. And so, but it was worth it because now there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not more, people, children, adults, everything, that are still alive today because I would spend 16 hours there studying this stuff every day. Why? Because we put our hands on them and they live and they don't die. Amen?